Imagine a trawler capable of hauling up several tons of fish in a single catch. This massive trawler is specifically designed to function as a mobile seed processing factory. Building this state-of-the-art fishing vessel takes about a year. At first glance, it looks like a mansion is being constructed. At this shipyard, workers weld and assemble tens of thousands of tons of steel, incorporating cutting-edge technology to create the world's most advanced deep-sea trawler. Below the deck, workers operate around the clock in the fish processing workshop, producing a thousand tons of halibut products per voyage. Today, they're setting off for West Greenland, where they may face extreme weather, massive waves, and countless icebergs. For most people, this would be an exhilarating maritime adventure. But for these German sailors, it's just another day on the job. Each voyage lasts a month or even several months. Although the work isn't as comfortable as a white-collar office job, the pay is quite substantial. Before embarking, everyone must be thoroughly prepared, as even a small mistake can lead to serious consequences. Currently, the ocean trawler mark is docked quietly at Bremerhaven Fishing Port in Germany. As Germany's most advanced ocean trawler, it measures 100 meters long and 16 meters wide. Workers are now loading tons of food into the cabins, which will sustain the crew for the next several weeks. Vitamin replenishment is essential, so a substantial amount of fruits and vegetables will be stored on board. Meanwhile, technicians carefully inspect the engine room. This voyage will span a distance of 2,000 nautical miles. On deck, workers examine the fishing equipment, checking otter boards, and ensuring screws are tightened, among other tasks. Ten minutes before departure, the captain directs the crew to release the ropes. The mobile sea factory is then slowly towed out of the dock by a tugboat. The journey will first take them to Scotland before continuing on to West Greenland. As night falls, the captain remains vigilant in the control room as the entire journey is often beset by storms. His primary responsibility is to safely return the crew home. When sunrise arrives, a crew member takes turns waking up the others by opening bedroom doors. The chef has already been up for two hours, preparing breakfast for everyone. Starting at 5 a.m., he cooks three meals a day, making his job just as demanding as the rest of the crew's. Today's breakfast features pancakes with milk. After eating, the crew members don their work clothes. By this point, the ship has been sailing on the high seas for about three days, and they need to be fully prepared before reaching the fishing grounds. In the engine room, technicians switch the engine to use heavy crude oil, a cheaper fuel that can only be used in designated waters. On deck, crew members unfold the fishing net and ready it for deployment. Below the deck, in the plant, workers hasten to fine-tune the fish processing machines, particularly the conveyor belts, as any delay would impact the entire production process. In the freezing room at the bottom of the ship, the temperature hovers around minus 30 degrees Celsius, and workers prepare trays for storing the catch. Since the vessel spends months at sea at a time, each crew member has developed a variety of skills, including assisting one another with haircuts. After all the preparations are made, the fishing finally begins. First, workers must secure otter boards to the chains. These boards ensure the fishing net stays evenly open while hauling in the fish. Currently, the sea trawler is located near the southern end of Greenland in the North Atlantic, where large icebergs float on the water's surface. The captain must remain extremely alert, using binoculars to keep a close watch on the surroundings. The hummingbird sensor shows they're only a few hours away from the fishing zone. Meanwhile, the equipment in the processing plant below the deck has been fine-tuned, and workers secure the trawl net to a thick steel cable on the deck above. Now, the crew performs a final inspection of the fishing net, manually mending any holes with ropes. This task is tedious and repetitive but crucial, as any hole will grow larger when hauling fish, potentially leading to a fruitless haul. Next, it's time to cast the net. However, things don't go smoothly as the steel cable on the winch gets stuck. Spanning three kilometers in length, the crew works diligently to lower the fishing net into the sea, followed by deploying the otter boards. Once submerged, the otter boards fully open the net, and the water pressure generated during towing helps direct fish into the net. 
The entire process takes several hours before the crew can haul in the catch. The captain keeps a close eye on the echo sounder, adjusting the trawler's speed and direction based on the underwater movements of the fish. At this point, the crew members need to put on waterproof oilcloth clothing and helmets. Finally, the exciting moment of hauling in the net arrives. The heavy outer boards are the first to be pulled up. Workers assist in securing the iron chains to the winch. Meanwhile, whales surface, seizing the opportunity to intercept schools of fish along the way. When the fishing net is pulled onto the ship, a dense mass of fish entangled in the net comes into view. With just one haul, over 10 tons of black halibut are caught. All the crew's prior efforts and preparations prove worthwhile. Now, workers open two steel hatches on the deck and manually dismantle the net opening, allowing the halibut to slide through the gate and into the hold. The catch is enormous, as evident from the expressions on the crew members' faces. Subsequently, they use a crane to gradually lift the tail end of the fishing net, while workers shake the net below, and others use shovels to push the fish on the deck forward. In this manner, tons of halibut are funneled into the opening above the hold. Next, the captain needs to control the navigation direction and prepare to cast the second net. As the hatch closes, the work is handed over to the halibut processing plant workers below. Thousands of halibut fall onto conveyor belts through the chute. First, the fish are beheaded, and the heads are separated, packaged, and ready to be shipped to Asia. Workers then manually remove tails and innards. The halibut are then weighed and packaged. Following this, the packaged halibut undergo freezing at minus 38 degrees Celsius and are finally placed in trays in a minus 30 degrees Celsius refrigerated room. This storage facility can hold over a thousand tons of halibut products at once. Would you like to become a sailor on such a ship? Imagine spending every day surrounded by the vast ocean, engaging in fascinating fishing work, earning high wages, and enjoying fresh North Atlantic deep-sea black halibut daily. This is life on Germany's most advanced deep-sea trawler. At this point, they have been sailing for over a week and are currently in the deep-sea fishing grounds off the coast of West Greenland. The weather is becoming increasingly unpredictable, with storms forming and waves growing. If you are prone to seasickness, this environment can be unbearable. Soon, the deck becomes covered in a thick layer of snow. The crew uses seawater to wash the deck as the salt content helps prevent freezing. They are preparing to haul in their second net of the trip, following the same procedure as before. The crew first uses the winch to pull back the iron chains, followed by securing the outer boards. Finally, they pull tons of halibut onto the ship. Unfortunately, this catch is less than satisfactory, estimated to be only a few tons. Everyone hopes the storm ends soon, otherwise, reaching their 1,000-ton target will be difficult. Once the weather improves, they expect their luck to turn and each net to bring in at least 10 tons of black halibut. During breaks, crew members visit the ship store to buy necessities, including non-alcoholic beer and cigarettes. Items are affordable since most are duty-free. The engine is operated by four technicians, generating over 5,000 horsepower. Also, it provides 24-hour power support for the halibut processing workshop in the cabin, as well as an emergency system. The engine room is controlled manually, and their progress has been smooth thus far. After the storm, they switch between two fishing nets to maximize their catch. However, occasionally, the main engine may become damaged, resulting in a power outage. In such cases, the emergency power system must be activated until the main engine is repaired. During this time, all fishing operations come to a halt. This time, the issue seems more severe as the fishing net has become entangled in the propeller at the bottom of the ship. To resolve the problem, they call a rescue tugboat to tow them to the nearest harbor repair station. First, divers are sent to inspect the situation while the person in charge closely monitors the screen to identify the problem. After over an hour, the divers resurface. The good news is that there is no damage to the hull or propeller. The solution is to cut the entangled net using knives, then clean up the mess. Next, they will head into the deep sea again, continuing their search for the next suitable place to cast their nets.
This is life aboard Germany's largest fishing trawler, where the crew members earn high incomes but also face significant risks as they float on the ocean, battling against nature's force. This relentless pursuit continues day after day, year after year. Would you like to be one of them if you had the chance? Let us know in the comment area. That's all for today's video. If you enjoy this type of content, please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.